Hello everyone, I'm Cindy Harnett. I'm a 4-H leader here in Ontario County and I lead the 4-H entomology project. Entomology is the study of insects and today I'm going to tell you how to go on your own insect safari hunting for the big four right in your own backyard. So what is a safari? Safari is a word that comes to us from Swahili. It means an overland journey, usually with tourists in Africa. Traditionally, a safari meant that people were going big game hunting, but today a safari is for wildlife watching and photography. We're going to go on a safari, but we're going to do it with insects right here in our own backyards. If you had gone to Africa for a safari, you'd probably be looking for the big five. The big five for an African safari are all mammals. You'd be looking for a lion, leopard, rhinoceros, elephant, and Cape buffalo. I've listed the orders these animals are in so that you can understand when we're looking for the North American insect big four that these are the same sort of classifications. Insects are divided into 24 orders. Of those orders, these four have the most recorded species. The top, um, the, the top species are all beetles. They come from the order Coleoptera. Usually they have a shiny hard shell, such as what a ladybug has. The next group are flies. This is order Diptera. They have two wings. You're going to have mosquitoes, houseflies, and gnats are all in this category. The third one is ants, bees, and wasps. This is the order Hymenoptera. A quick way to remember someone from Hymenoptera is that they're going to have four wings, but remember not all ants are going to have wings. The fourth group everyone should know very well, it's butterflies and moths. They're in the order Lepidoptera. Now what we're looking for is adults from each one of these orders to show for our safari. You may not actually see the adult, you might see another life stage. For example, you might see a caterpillar, which would be the larval stage of a butterfly or moth. You might also see evidence that the insect was there, but you can't find the insect. Go ahead and put that down, such as a hole in a tree that a beetle that showed a beetle used to be there. You can also look for other insects in other orders, and you can look for other critters. You might find a snail, you might find a centipede, you might find a spider. Those aren't insects, but they should still be recorded because they're all part of your safari. So how do you prepare for a safari? First, you need to choose a day for your trip. It's better if it's a day without a lot of wind um, and with sunshine because you'll be able to see more insects. Gather your field gear. This would be something to record your safari. So like a paper and pen, you might want a notebook or a sketch pad maybe even your camera, something to take along so you're ready to record and have a good time. Next, you're gonna make the backyard safari promise, which we'll do together in just a moment. And then I want you to get outside, look around, see what's there. Um, you may even be greeted by insects as soon as you open your door. And so make sure and look at them, observe them, put them down. Make the record because if you spend any amount of time outdoors, you could find hundreds of insects if you're really looking, or you could find just a few. It's all going to depend on the day and where you are. What you're going to do when you get back is you're going to make a map so we can see where you were on your safari when you saw the different um, creatures. And of course, plan your next safari. Have some fun with this one, but also plan for the next one. So the backyard safari promise is basically that you're not going to 
disturb, you're not going to kill the creatures that you find. So we would do this together, say, I, Cindy, promise not to harm any insects or other creatures I find on my safari. I will take only memories and leave only footprints. Once you've gotten um, through your safari, you're ready to go back home, you're gonna draw a map of the area that you covered. So for me, I just went around my house, so I have my house and my yard. Then you're gonna label the big things, say houses, roads, trees, fences, things like that, so that we have an idea, or at least mark them in a, in a color so that you know um, that they're different than the insects. I want you to add which direction is north on your map so we know how to orient the map if we're looking at it. Use an X to mark the insects that you found and then number the X marks. On my map I have up to number 17 because I was taking photos as I went and I had 17 photos. And then you can color or draw in your landscape. If you want to get fancy, you can draw your actual insects on, on the map, whatever you want to do. Add personal notes, including the date and the place. Then when you're finished with your map and make it as thorough and comprehensive as you can, you're going to turn it in for a chance at the prize. So here's my map. I went on safari just right around my house and my yard on May 29th. This cut off a little bit, but you can see at the very bottom that there was um, X17, and I have other Xs all the way around. I really had a great time doing this, and because I wanted it to be the big four, I primarily recorded those groups of insects that I saw, even though I saw a couple other insects at the same time. So let me show you a couple pictures from my safari. So this is the only beetle that I could find that day. I found several species of the same beetle, and it's a little tiny thing, um, no lar larger than my pinky fingernail. So I used my macro lens on my cell phone to get an enlarged picture of this little tiny beetle on one of my bushes. Now here's an example of a fly. This is a crane fly. They're really big and they're really slow. So they're great to take photos of because you can actually see them and they stand still it might be really hard to get a picture of any kind of fly because they are so good at taking off as soon as you tend to look at them. But try and record any way that you saw something, say a housefly, a mosquito, whatever you find. So here's another picture I took with my macro lens. This is an ant on a flower bud and you can see the detail of the little hairs on its back and the joints in its antenna. It was a good size ant, but with the macro lens, you can see those details. Then around the corner of my house, I took another picture of an ant. This is just on my siding. It was, again, a pretty large ant, and I was pretty close to it, but you can see that the macro lens makes a difference as far as the detail of the actual ant um, with in the in the photo. These are two different ant species, but it's a little harder to tell. So that's what I found for my Hymenoptera low and could not find any butterflies or moths. So I did find a caterpillar in two different places. I don't know what variety it is, but I think I used my macro for this because I don't think I was using my regular lens. It was not a very big caterpillar. Hopefully you'll be able to find either butterflies or moths when you go outside and do your, um, and do your safari. So afterwards, you're gonna share your safari 
you turn your map in by five o'clock on June 24th, then we're gonna have a Zoom call on June 25th at 3 p.m. We're gonna do a live drawing. We're gonna, I'm going to award two, these are called macro lenses for your cell phone. It's just a little rubber band, easy macro. Um, one for Livingston County 4-H member and one for an Ontario County 4-H member so that they can use the macro lenses to take photos of insects. If you want to go on and do some more entomology, I have some suggestions. Top suggestion, of course, is that you join the 4-H Entomology Project. I also have resources if you want to learn more about um, an African safari with the animals. The last book was actually written by an American entomologist, Dr. Edward O. Wilson. I have insect safari resources, particularly for bees and other pollinators here in North America. And I also want to plug that um, go to Instagram or Facebook to the Ento Barbie account so that you can see how she interacts with insects. Um, whoever is running that account is an actual entomologist. So thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you on the Zoom call and happy safari.